Hello and welcome to Rising Match Day this Saturday the 7th of August. I'm Owen Evans, here to talk you through everything going on in the world of Phoenix Rising before tonight's away game against Las Vegas Lights. Coming up on the show. Just over a week ago, Rising gave a professional contract to an academy player for the first time. Hear the reasoning behind that. Two new centurions for the club, manager Rick Schantz and midfielder Kevin Lambert. Hear more about what that means. And a look to tonight's game at Cashman Field. But first we're going to take a look back to a few nights ago when Phoenix Rising travelled to Oakland to face Roots. The first midweek clash of the season for Rising and a trip up to the first Oakland USL game at Laney College. Rising with the best chance of the first half, Santi Moore with this effort from distance, ultimately parried out of play by Zeus de la Paz thanks to a diving save. Rising would break the deadlock though. A long ball forward for Solomon Asante from Joe Farrell. It's laid off to David Egbo, played across to Aidan Quinn, who finishes. And that's all we'd see on the scoreboard. Rising take it 1-0, a tricky three points on a tricky playing surface, but they do come away with the spoils. Oakland not able to put a single shot on target. Fairly quiet night for Andre Rolls and the Phoenix goal. Besides the shooting disparity, a pretty even game between the two sides, but it's Rising who edge it in the end. But well, one of the biggest talking points going into, and even during and after the game, the playing surface. Here's what Rick Shantz had to say about that. It was, it played very slow. Uh, the ball didn't roll true. It, it actually kind of slid sideways. Um, I think from a safe, safety standpoint, um, it, it met all the qualifications, but from a playability, it was very, very difficult. I, I think it takes a, a lot of the technical ability out of the game because controlling the ball is is difficult. It doesn't move the way you want it to move. Um, you know, I, I think when Bokila got in behind us at the end there and he went to hit that shot, I'm sure the ball was sliding off a, away from him. Um, we, we went the day before and even during warm-up, and if you just pass the ball in a straight line, you know, uh, 10 yards right out of player, right at the end, it would like slide about two or three feet away from them. So it was really awkward. Also very thick. So uh, we asked them to wet it. They, they weren't able to really get the field wet properly. And it was just going right through and drying so quickly. So it just played really slow. Um, look, we can say what we want. It's it's a field we had to play on, and I'm just glad that, that we got the result. My, the boys had said it, that if we complain and we lose, we sound like uh, we're making excuses. So um, they, they, they had a really good mindset. Of course, that wasn't the only thing we were talking about after the match. That game, the 100th rising game that Rick Shantz has managed, here's what he had to say about that achievement. Uh, I think it's awesome. It's it's good for a club to have some consistency, not only in performance, but in staff and in in players. And, you know, that's how you build culture, uh, keeping good people. I mean, Kev and, and Solo are two of the best, not just players, but people. So I, I think that's important. Um, you know, for me, gosh, man, I think back to the, the six years I did in, in Tucson and the number of games that I've coached over my career and for me to be able to have coached a hundred professional games, um, this is a dream. It's always been a dream come true. And I'm so excited. I'm so happy to, to have 
every day with this team and this club and, and this ownership. It's, um, I mean, I can't tell you how lucky I am. And to, I hope there's a hundred more. Have you done anything particularly special to mark the occasion? <laughs> uh, well, they gave me that jersey and I think I wore it for about 24 hours straight. They had a good laugh. The next morning we went down to the pool and I had the jersey on and, and my swimsuit and, and they, they, I think it, they had a good time with that. Um, I, I said, that's, thank God they got an extra large. I mean, it was a bit tight. They didn't have to shove a 2X on me, but um, no, nothing really special. I can't wait. Uh, today is my 19th wedding anniversary, actually, and my wife's back home teaching school, and I'm here, and uh, maybe we'll go out and have a dinner and celebrate 100 games in, in 19 years that she's put up with me. Well, Rick, joining Solomon Asante with that centurion status, but they were also joined on Wednesday night by another, Kevin Lambert. Come on, Lambert. Just trying to drive it in, and it finds the back of the net. Since he first joined in 2017, Lambert has been an important part of Rising's midfield, and he's picked up 10 goals along the way to 100 games, while also impressing the crowd with his acrobatic celebrations. Cortez heads it. Now a man has a clear path to the goal, and scoring is... You know, there's a funny saying that I used to... People said that, um, what is it... Uh, how, however much land cover, covers the planet and N'Golo Kante covers the rest or something like that. Um, that's how I feel about Kev, that no matter what happens in a game, whether there's a transitional moment, we're in possession, um, we're defending and set defending, you always feel better knowing that this guy's patrolling the field because he is the ultimate competitor. He's the ultimate uh, defensive style midfielder. I think that the way he tracks people down and – you know, when he sets his sights on a player and he's going after him to get the ball, he, he wins the ball. Um, I think he was, I want to say, 14 of 15 successful in his duels uh, against Oakland. And I think he had 12 recoveries and, and four or five interceptions. I mean, that's unbelievable uh, at any level. So um, when, when you put him down and doesn't matter who's in your defense because it's like putting a wall in front of them. And, and that's, that's what he, he's uh, he's been fantastic. And he, he definitely has, you know, I see the rest of the world is kind of moving towards more of a possession style sixes and, and holding midfielders that like to play and move and, you know, more active, but I kept seeing Kev develop his feet and his technical ability. And um, he, I told him, I said, he reminds, I grew up, loving Arsenal, watching Patrick Vieira. And, and when I watch Kev, I mean, that's, that's what he reminds me of. And it's, I mean, I don't, I don't know if, if that's too much of a compliment, but he, he deserves it. But while the numbers are racking up for Rick and Kev, there's a new member of the Phoenix Rising squad. Well, not truly new, perhaps, as he was here on an academy contract, but he's the first academy player to sign a professional deal. Not bad for 16-year-old Niall Dunn. Well, the rate at which he's developing has been very good. Um, you know, there's a, there's certain markers that players, we like to see players hit, you know, in, in their player development plan. Um, you know, technically, tactically, he's very, very high. I think physically is his only limitation, but we've seen him work extremely hard. You know, he's lifting weights every day now. He's He's pushing himself physically as much as he possibly can. And we felt that, by signing him to a pro contract, that's the aspect that he could really focus on the most because as an academy contract, he still got school and his time was split with, you know, being a, a pro soccer player and being a kid and, and being a student and all these different things. So now it's, you know, 95% pro athlete and he's trying to get his school done, but he's a, he's a very, very smart guy. And I think he's already way ahead in his, in his online schooling. So um, we're very happy for him and, um, you know, he's, he's just ahead of the process and when they're ahead of the process, you can't, I think it was worth it for the club to, uh, uh, to invest in a player like Niall because he's going to be a great pro for the future. Rick, given you've, you've got full center backs ahead of, ahead of Niall, um, on the books, is there any chance you'd look at maybe a loan or something to get him some first team football? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, 
Uh, I've spoken to a couple other clubs, uh, not just about Nile, but maybe about another player or two, um, just to make sure that guys are staying fit. In other news, Shea Adekoya has gone out on loan to OKC Energy, where he joins fellow rising player Declan Wynn. But let's have a look now at what happened over the past couple of days in the rest of the Pacific Division. Just the one Pacific Division game here since the last time we caught up. It was Sacramento Republic and Tacoma Defiance meeting in Washington on Thursday. Republic up in the first half. Christian Herrera comes out of the goal to collect the ball. Just doesn't as the miscommunication causes a collision. Jerome Kieserwetter on hand to tap it in before showing us in his celebration attempt why he wasn't called up to the Olympic gymnastics team. Tacoma working their way back in in the second half, on top for large spells of it. Eventually it paid off, from one sub to another, Ray Serrano's low cross goes right across goal before Randy Mendoza tucks it away. And that's how it had finished, one all. Well, the late equaliser for Tacoma means they hold on to fourth spot in the table. Sacramento would have leapfrogged them if the 1-0 scoreline had remained intact. Rising's result extends the gap at the top to 10 points. To put that in context, the only side further away from second place than Rising is last place Oakland Roots. Not only that, but Rising has a game in hand over both OC and San Diego, who are second and third respectively. No shortage of action to keep you watching this week. Orange County and LA Galaxy 2 playing at 7pm tonight. San Diego Loyal hosting Monarchs at 7.30. An afternoon game tomorrow sees Tacoma host Oakland at half one. And Oakland hosting in midweek again. They face Sacramento at 7 on Wednesday. Well, it's a trip to Vegas this weekend for Rising. The Phoenix side not returning to Arizona since they left for Oakland. Cashman Field, always an interesting place to play against lights, to say the least. But has Rick had anything to say to the boys that haven't been here to play in Vegas before? before? <laughs> uh, well, they got whatever we were at in Oakland is this will be tame compared to that. So uh, uh, not only was Oakland's surface difficult to play, their crowd was uh, was entertaining. They were there was a lot of music. It was very loud and. Uh, it was hard to concentrate on what you were doing. That, that, for our guys to get out of there with three points is is a credit to their character and, and desire to win. So I, I think that um, they'll, they'll they'll be ready for Vegas now. I feel lucky that that we had to go through that. You sure there's no water balloon fights or helicopters coming up? I haven't heard of anything yet, so I hope I hope not. But overall, what are they expecting to see out of lights? Very good team. Uh, Cal Jennings is a very dangerous forward, very fast, uh, constantly active, constantly moving. Uh, I, I don't think Bryce Duke will be with them for this game, but they've got some other very young, talented players. So uh, the, we were out there today. The surface isn't too bad. Um, it's grass, so that's a good start. And um, I know the boys are they're feeling pretty good, a little bit tired, a little beat up, but they, they had a mission this week and, you know, I think they're, they're three points away from accomplishing that goal and they knew it would be very difficult, uh, especially this last one. So hopefully we're ready for it. And to round us out, there's one player who won't be featuring for Rising tonight, perhaps even opening up space for another to make his club debut. But what did Rick have to say about Joe Farrell? You know, and, and I told him, I said, hey, I know you're going to see family and you're going to a wedding, but the position is yours. You've done a fantastic job. Uh, obviously, we're going to have somebody else play there um, against Vegas, but he's it's what he does. You know, every year he comes in and I told him every year I try to put pressure on you and and uh, he he competes and he's positive and um, he's such a good leader. I wish I could, you guys could hear him in the locker room before the games. I mean, the stuff he's shouting and he's ready to rock and roll. And it's just he's an ultimate fighter. He's he cares about the team so much. And, um, you know, I. I Look, it's it's so it's hard to put into words how I feel about this guy, but because every year I'm I'm thinking, man, maybe we can get a better center back, and he just never ever lets me lets me live it down. You know, he's always like, coach, you're not going to be able to replace me. So, but he's a great guy. 
Well, that's all we've got time for here tonight. Make sure to follow along on social media as I'll be bringing you all the latest from inside Cashman Field, where they'll probably be trying to sell us a Toyota or something. I'll do anything to sell you a car. Check out the handle above. You'll find me using that on both Instagram and on Twitter. Tonight's game, a 7.30pm kickoff. Until then, enjoy the match. Goodbye.